Yes, guys. Good evening. Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. I do appreciate it, guys. Yeah, we've got a packed video for you today. We're going to talk about, obviously, um, a lot of people, I don't know why it's been brought up, but a lot of people have been chatting about it, saying that Jurgen Klopp's overrated. There's been a lot of videos going around, a lot of polls, talking about Jurgen Klopp. So we're going to ask, we'll, we'll just go ask a simple question, is he overrated? Um, Trent to Real Madrid and Rodrigo to Liverpool. They're the subjects tonight, guys. So big up for everyone joining me on Midnight Madness and... Uh, yeah, got my man K-Mac with me. K-Mac, how you doing, man? I'm good, I'm good. How's everyone? How are you today, Scraps? Said it right. There you go. Good name right, man. <laughs> <laughs> Bone is straight off the ground. <clears throat> but yeah, guys, we've got, we got quite a bit to talk about, obviously. There's uh, a lot of interesting stuff. But before we get to it, make sure, guys, you go hit that like button. Subscribe as well if you haven't already. I would appreciate it. And guys, obviously, uh, my shop is now open as well. Little bits are going on at a time and time. Uh, so there'll be more going on in the days to come. But go and check it out, guys. Go and check it out. There's the link right there. My man K Max already done that. So big up to him as well. Yes, yeah, so go and check that out. That. Right? <laughs> <laughs> go and check it out go and check it out but big up to everyone in the chat hope you're doing well thank you for joining me i know it's late but this midnight madness show will be going on we'll be doing a few of these now i do like doing it this time it's easy actually for me to do this but yeah let's talk about transfer news because we might have cal from coppish joining us in a bit as well once he's finished on the sam's channel so we'll get his take on a little bit as well but Let's talk about the uh, the Trent situation now. Obviously, Trent Alexander Arnold has got oh, less than eighteen months left in his contract. Now, if he hasn't signed a new deal by the start of next season, he'll only have a year left in his contract. And my opinion is, when a player's only got a year left in his contract, they hold all the power. Real Madrid apparently Fabrizio said it today, and some other people. I think some other journalists mentioned it first, but oh, I didn't know. And then Fabrizio mentioned it as well now Real Madrid are keeping tabs on the Trent situation now I personally don't see him going but came out what do you think man it's a it's an interesting situation ain't it because he has only got what 16 17 months left in his deal we don't know what's going on because we don't know what's going on at the club at the moment we don't know the manager's gonna be or whatnot so what, what's your take on all this is it just hot air because it's national break or do you think they're saying it? So the, the biggest question you've got to ask yourself is, well, he's not going to Real Madrid as a midfielder because he ain't going to get in that midfield because no, they've, got, sure. <laughs> they've got they've got they've um, got Valverde, Camavinga, Chiumeni, Andrew Bellingham, and then they've mm. still got like Modric on the on the books, so he's not going to get into into the midfield, so he's no. going to go there as a right back and. And he doesn't like playing as a right back. <laughs> no, that is so, true. That is true. And they play a solid right back. And and Ancelotti's just signed a new contract. So if anyone thinks that Ancelotti's going anywhere, then that's not happening either because he's just signed a new contract. So mm -hmm. where does he play at Real Madrid? He he would play as a as an as a proper right back because they play with a proper right back. So it won't be inverted. So his best chance is to stay with an Almerin or a or an Alonso where they play wing backs. And yeah. he'll have a much, much more attacking role. Um, which fits the bill really for me. Um it's an interesting one. But it's weird that he hasn't signed a new contract. Like like they didn't get that done before Klopp, you know, talked about leaving. It's a weird one. Yeah, it, this is the thing. Obviously, the three main players, Trent Addison and um, BVD, coming to the end of their deals. And Salah. Obviously. Salah. Um, Salah, not Salah, Ali. yes. Salah. Yeah. Uh, not Addison, Salah. Salah Ali's okay for a bit. Yeah. So, <laughs> we... Now, my only worry is, if we go on recent form... We basically let Mane go down to one year and his deal went out to sell him for cheap. Genie went on Genie went for a free. 
Naby went for a free. Thiago's going to go for a free. Ox went for a free. Bobby went for a free. Portland players at Liverpool Football Club, no matter what people think. Is there, is there a little bit of a worry that we're letting big players go down to very short time left in their contract? Should really Salah, Virgil and Salah, have, Salah, Virgil and Trent have like just over a year left in their deal we're talking about right now? I mean, if if we kept Edwards, there's no way that would have happened. Yeah. Like, like and he's also the no. person that said that that said he didn't want to give um, Ginny Wijnaldum a new contract. By the way, um, it was Edwards. Like, yeah, he's very they had a fallen out yeah. over it. Um, I mean, I mean, we're about to lose Matip and Thiago on free transfers as well. By yeah, the way, yeah, Matip's going as well. Yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> Edwards ain't gonna let that happen on his watch so that's not going to happen I, I think i think the first things that are going to happen with um hughes is he's going to tie down salah virgil and trent he has to or or they make a decision whether they're going but but i think they'll all be they'll all be tied down like the, like if you if you just think of this season alone two of the players who've who've created the most chances in all five leagues in the in in Europe, one of them Salah and one of them's Trent. Like mm. they are just massive creative forces. But you can't take both of those players out of your team. Um, it, it 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 will cost you in the long run. Um, and we've suffered like for when they have come out of teams for for the for the clear cut chances that we that we create. Um, I mean. You know, Salah would probably have 20 assists this season if it wasn't for the fact that Nunes couldn't put the ball in the back of the net. Because yeah, Salah, Salah gave him the ball so many times with a clear clear chance. So, you know, Salah's a more creative player now. Trent's more creative because he gets gets involved more because he moves into midfield more. You know, I, I think those two players, that there'll be a priority to get them signed on new contracts. Yeah. What... I just find it a bit mad that we continue letting a club run down these deals. I mean, we used to laugh at Arsenal for doing that, didn't we? Yeah, we did. We did. And we've like, done it loads since Edwards leaving left. Your, <laughs> yeah, leaving your big players down to this limited time, you know. Look, I, I look at Virgil Van Dijk. I don't care how old he is. Is how do you replace him? You know, you've got to replace him eventually one day. I understand that, but it we don't really, really for me, wanting to be replacing Virgil van Dijk this summer. Because this is the thing. If players are not going to sign a new deal, and this is the issue of it, if players are not going to sign a new deal, we can't afford to keep letting clubs go for free. We're meant to be sell to buy. So we've got to sell people eventually. If Trent, Virgil and Mo turn around to the club this summer and say we're not going to sign new deals what do the club do do they just leave them for a year play out their contract or do they sell all three of them this summer if that's okay how much are you going to get for them though mate with a year left i think i think i think there was rumors of um trent being like 70 odd million which i would say is about right because of his age and his profile I mean, I mean, I I talked about Trent and and I said that Trent would be the first first left back to be sold. Oh, sorry, first um first defender to be sold for over 150 million. Like I talked about that a while ago. Like I thought he would be the first one, like the biggest the biggest transfer for for a defender um in history. But I mean, would you sell him for 70 million? I I, I don't think I want him. To, I don't think I want him. Like. Trent's going to play now to the rest of the season. Like it, it just is. Like this is this is now the time where Klopp Klopp plays all the best players constantly. It's mm. it's the business end. He's not going to play the kids now. Like so, you're now going to see Trent and Salah and Virgil just could play every single game and you know get that consistency again and 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 then it's going to be like a year left on all their contracts. Like, yeah. That has to that has to be what Richard Hughes is is getting sorted soon as has to be. 
Well, you'd think it, and my, 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 I look at it and think, like, Liverpool probably quite comfortable with the contract situation before they heard Jürgen was leaving, like in back in November. They were probably quite easy with it because Jürgen had a couple of years left. I think they feel like if Jürgen's here, the boys will stay. It's only a matter of time for we'll get round to talking to them, get the deal signed. But now Jürgen's left. The club are stuck in a position at the moment where, see, if I'm Trent and Virgil and Salah, my whole Liverpool career has basically been playing for Jurgen Klopp and Jurgen Klopp's team. And they got a close, close bond with the manager. They might not trust the club 100% to get it right. We've heard Virgil come out recent times and talk about, you know, spend and getting players in, the right players and stuff like that. So you would feel like it might be, don't you think, I don't know, but it might actually be playing on their mind right now. They're just a wait and see game. Like, okay, they got Michael Edwards back. That's a great start. Sporting Direct's in. That's a great start. Behind the scenes, that's good now. But who's going to be the man? Who's, uh, who's going to be the man that I'm be training with every day? Match plays, match games, tactical analysis. Who's going to be that man? Do you think the manager, whoever the manager is, is takes a real key part in these boys signing new deals? I don't, you know, mate. I don't. I I, I feel like I feel like. Well, we know for a fact anyway that that Salah and Virgil were. Were Edwards like Edwards was all over those? Hmm. Like Edwards was talking to Richard Hughes before <laughs> before Liverpool were even looking at Mo Salah. Um, they were having conversations about Allison and Salah mm-hmm. while they were at Roma, like in the early doors. So so they know they know good players, and they talked about them before. Um, Edwards wanted to get to get um, Virgil Van Dijk from Celtic like directly to Liverpool. Mm-hmm. And then you've also yeah. got Hughes who wanted to sign him for Bournemouth, but he went to Southampton. So they know the players. Um and I, I would I would I would think a lot of it is probably going to be Edwards uh talking to those players. And I, I would also say that Edwards is probably going to have a huge huge say in in the transfers. And I, I know he's the football COO uh for FSG, but I do think he'll he'll have He'll still have a lot more say in in the way the transfers are ran, um, and the Trent thing. I th- I think I think it's I think with him, it's going to be down down to what formation the manager plays, because he wants to play in midfield, or he wants to have more of a an advanced role, and he doesn't want to do defending. Like he just doesn't want to do that. So the new guy, whether it's an Amarin, whether it's an Alonso, plays wing backs. So he'll have a more uh, attacking role. And whether the new manager plays plays a bigger midfield, and he can fit in there. Mm. You know, I, th- I think I think with him it probably is going to be the manager. But I think the other two, I think Edwards would probably have a huge say in 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 convincing them because they've only got a couple of years left, like in football, really. Trent's got like another five years before he's thirty, <laughs> which is crazy. Even saying that, <laughs> time man. Yeah, he's got yeah. like <laughs> if you're see if you're Trent Alexander Arnold, yeah. If you're Trent, and you're looking at this. You got the world at your feet, yeah, and you're looking at it and thinking. I want to play for Liverpool Football Club. That's my boyhood club. That's the club I want to be. The rest of my career, he said this in interviews before. It's not an issue. I want to stay at this football club. But if there's one team that could probably change his mind, it's it is um, uh, Real Madrid. Real Madrid. I would have thought. Yeah, it personally. is. Yeah, it is. So that's my only worry. You know, just being, just having the fact that. He, he's, oh, I don't know what he's, just the fact that Real Madrid are there and there's obviously some kinds of talks and oh, he's going such close to his contract. Yeah, for me, it's a bit of a worry. It's a bit of a worry. I don't know what you, that just that Real Madrid. It's too close to the contract for Trent. Well, Absolutely. 
pick out the right <laughs> the uh if sam right yeah, you, just, you just had a go at you because you haven't got your redirects on jay so you put a link uh, out oh i've got no no read out oh i just always <laughs> fucking turn that shit off you know i didn't even expect him to do it big up with sam anyway yeah um big up to everyone coming uh big up to you cow up doing well man nah, uh, good this nice one came out bro it's been a while as well Big up, man. Tom was getting pelters then before I, <laughs> before I left to get on to here. <laughs> but yeah, good nice point and, uh, what do you think, though, K Mac, about that? Right, just the Real Madrid situation because I feel like that is the club that, yeah, Trent was going to leave. It would be them, like, 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 like I said, I just, I just don't think the formation fits him. Like, he's not going to get in the midfield. <laughs> like, how's he going to displace like that four? And then you've got Modric. Modric as well. Uh, he's not going to get in that midfield, so he's going to play as a as a as a right back, like a proper right back, not like a, a wing back, an actual proper right back, because that's what that's what um, uh, Ancelotti plays. So I, I, I mean, if Alonso goes there, we might go, <laughs> but we don't want Alonso to go there because he might take yeah, trade. <laughs> This is, this is very look, it's very true. I mean, I it's mad to say it's mad to say, but Cal, like with the Trent Real Madrid rumors, my only obviously my concern is they ain't signed a new deal yet, and you can't leave it till a year left in their deal because they have all the power. Then and you're basically yeah. stuffed. My issue with the Real Madrid thing, the way Real Madrid might look at me looking at it, is they want because the rumor is that. If Mbappe goes to Real Madrid, he's going to be playing off the right hand side because Vinny Junior plays off the left. Do they want a right hand side? Do Real Madrid want a right hand side of Trent, Bellingham, and Mbappe? From an attacking standpoint, Jeez. can't get anything better. From a defensive standpoint, Eda Militao and Rudiger are going to be working overtime. Every single minute of every single game, because Mbappe's he, he wouldn't track a parcel. So and <laughs> and Bell Bellingham is virtually playing as a ten who drifts over to the right. And we love Trent, but we also have been saying for a while we want him in midfield because the defensive like frailty sometimes show their show their ugly heads. I, I don't even know if Carlo and Carlo Ancelotti, I reckon rates Trent high as a footballer because obviously how could you not I don't know if he's an Ancelotti type of player I maybe really don't especially, especially as a right back maybe like, not that's yeah. what I said and Ancelotti's going nowhere he's just signed a new contract and and can you Real Madrid what, afford can they afford another 100 million <laughs> like, like where are they getting all this money from <laughs> They've actually spent that big over the years recently, if I'm not mistaken, because they've yeah, been waiting they, for Mbappe. They, yeah, then then that spend is smaller than ours, man. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. <laughs> I'll shut up there. Yeah, Real Madrid have got. <laughs> yeah, they don't spend a lot, Rick, because they look they wait for players now, don't they? They wait for a certain player. But if the thing with Real Madrid, they will get a player in even if it don't suit the manager because they think the players gonna be there longer and a manager anyway, so. They could be looking at someone like Trent. I mean, the thing is, Trent is so good in where he where on the pitch. I think someone like Carlo Ancelotti would find somewhere for him to play because of his experience. Yeah. So, and in Spanish league, maybe you know that little tiny bit of slower pace, less pressing on the ball, with that much more space for Trent would be madness. Yeah, it could do it. My only worry, Carl, look, my literal worry is on all this stuff at the moment is that these three boys have not signed a new deal so far. Yeah. We don't know what's obviously going beyond the scenes because we don't know with Liverpool, they don't tell anything till it's happened. My worry is though, we're almost what we're getting to March. My phone just goes off. <laughs> my, uh, we... <laughs> you let one rip, Jay. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I thought your kid came in the room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what happened now. Um, you know, the three guys have signed new deals and not signed new deals yet. And, you know, the manager's leaving the turnaround at Liverpool. Our contract extension's not been good of late. You look at all the players that have been leaving on freeze or last year. That's just my worries. That's just my worry. It's like that last year of the deal. 
don't know how you feel, Cal. Are you a bit nervous about these three superstars? Almost been on one year left on their deal. Yeah, it's very negligent by the club, and we we did this a couple of seasons ago with a few players as well. And it's it just doesn't make sense. Like when we, I remember when we did. And it's crazy because I remember when we did the contract extensions for all these players, and we did them all in one summer because we weren't signing any players. It was only signed Canate that summer, yeah. and you're like, but these contracts aren't being staggered. Like everyone's going to expire like within the space of two years. And we've, we're seeing it, like, and it, to me, it's just a bit silly. I'm hoping this is something that Michael Edwards comes in and, and resolves ASAP. I think Virgil gets the first renewal. Salah, if he expresses a, a willingness to leave, which he has never done, despite all the rumours that circulate, I think Salah gets a slight bump in contract and bonuses. Um, but maybe a shorter term contract, yep. and I do think they pull out all the stops for Trent. I think Trent could end up being the second. Well, no, I think Trent will be the third top owner earner at the club. I think Virgil will be second, Salah will be first, and then I think Trent will be third. I do think we renew all three contracts. I look, I'm hoping we renew all disagree. three, but if the club are looking at it because we, we know we know our football club run we all know by now and they will be looking at it in a point of view not just for on the field they'll be looking at it financial as well because the way our club is run they'll be looking at someone like virgil he's 33 got a year left in his deal what do you give him for me you give him two years on top of what he's got left so then he's got three years left on his deal which takes into around that 36 mark I think that's perfect. And then you see how it goes a year before that. Two years later, you see how his career is going, how it's going, and you look for it extend again. I don't think the club will offer Virgil a long-time contract if that's what club uh, Virgil wants. If Virgil goes to the club and went, I want four years, I, I just don't see the club giving Virgil four years. I really don't. If it's Trent, I think they're gonna. Uh, personally, I think the club are gonna put anything they can to get Trent to sign a, a massive contract in yeah. keeping because he's. I think Trent gets a five-year offer. Yeah, yeah, I just like Joe Gomez did that time. Joe Gomez yeah. got a five-year deal offer, didn't yeah. he? And they're the same age when Gomez got that when Trent is now. So that's my worry, K mate. That for someone like Virgil. I don't. I think Virgil will want one last big deal, and I think Virgil will feel like he can play the 37, 38. I don't think the club will go off from a four-year deal, man. That's my own issue. What are you in? I um, I feel like it might go back to the old model where it's incentives and also trigger triggers as well. So, so if you want to extend, then you've got like a one-year extension because we did that with Milner. We did that with a couple of other players under under Edwards. Um, we extended Milner's, and then Klopp obviously wanted the new contract, which. Yeah, and it also happened with Henderson as well, but we won't go into that. Um, <laughs> especially with Callon as well. We won't talk about Henderson. Um, but um, but yeah, I mean, I I think they'll I think they'll throw the kitchen sink at, at Trent. He he's he's re he's the real asset. But, um, I, I know everyone talks about like Edwards, like you know, it's this model where he doesn't he doesn't want to keep old players, but you keep world class players whether they're old or not. And those two are just world yeah, class. Right. Like Virgil van Dijk's the best defender in the world, and for me, I still think Salah's the best best striker in the world. Like, and now he's starting to even produce assists at an incredible rate now, because he's kind of tailored his game to the fact that well, he hasn't got that pace anymore, and maybe doesn't get as many chances, so he's creating as well. You just tie those players down, like, and I I do think that him and him and Ed. Um, him and Hughes will will get that done. Um because even if you're gonna sell them, who are you gonna replace them with with that money? Say, yeah. You're not gonna get a player to replace them, even with that money. Like there's just no one there. Can't name them. <laughs> yeah. You're not gonna get Vinny. Uh, uh, that's a great point, Cal. <laughs> yeah, it, it, I mean yeah, this is it's a great point, Cal. I mean Virgil maybe, you know, I'm saying he won't give 
in that big contract, but maybe Virgil's the man that he feels like is, you know, worth giving a big, big deal to out of all the players. I think Virgil could get a bigger deal than Mo in a way. I don't think he will. Only because of what Mo brings to the club commercially. Mm-hmm. I think Mo knows that. So I think... I th- so what's Mo on now? Is Mo on at 350 now, right? 350, basic, yeah. Yeah. I reckon Mo gets a bump up to like 380. Are, Mo takes a million quid a week home. I reckon he gets a... I reckon he gets yeah. a bump to maybe 400 and then balances out. I don't think yeah. a 50 grand jump is a big jump for Mo. No, I, I, I just feel with Mo, look, Mo, Mo, if your rumours are true, Mo takes a million quid a week home. So if, if the rumours are true, after bonuses and you know, everything, right? With bonuses and likenesses Image and all that sort of stuff yeah. on top. Probably takes a lot home. Probably takes a lot home. But I. It, Mo's on so like what what look the thing is though I, I think Mo actually thinking about it now I think Mo might be the easiest to extend Mo because he's already the highest paid player yeah so he might be the easiest to extend what is Vir, what if Virgil's looking for Mo money because it's his last deal I don't think he would realistically though expect that might not really could ask it, but I don't might. think he'd expect it. I, I don't think we've got players like that at Liverpool, you know. But if he did, one of the, though, one of the caveats is no dickheads. <laughs> yeah. If he did, though, I wouldn't be mad at it. No. If he's yeah, on 400 and Mo's on 400, I, I'm, I'm genuinely all right with it. And I think that's, cool. as Liverpool fans, I think we've got to kind mm-hmm. of get our head around the fact that prices have gone up, inflation happens. We can't expect to be paying lower salaries than our rivals and expect to to keep players like you're asking a lot. No, I agree, man. It's no secret right. what the club right. makes. The accounts are there. Virgil get a bump to two fifty uh to two fifty from two twenty. Yeah, I mean I genuinely believe Virgil should be on about three if he's the best defender. Is he in on two twenty? Is he on two twenty? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Virgil's wow. on Virgil that, Virgil and Thiago. Virgil and Thiago are on the same wages. If he's the best centre back in the world, as Mason Mount, yeah, (laughs) just put that into perspective. If he's the best centre back in the world and our captain, for me, three hundred k shouldn't be like a wild figure for him. Yeah, yeah, and I still don't think that's enough. But uh, by the way, like they 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 will get more at other clubs. So we've we've done really well to to have players on those wages. By the way, yeah, should be on three hundred. I've got it here. Mo takes home eighteen point two million a year. Oh, right, that's all. That's all he takes home. Yeah, right. that's, so that's three hundred and fifty grand a week. Van Dyke is on two hundred and twenty grand a week, eleven million a year. Thiago's on two hundred. Trent is on a hundred and eighty grand a week. So Trent, you could easily go two hundred and twenty, easy. Straight away I for Trent. Do two, I think you do. Two is on 160, yeah. isn't he? Um, He's on similar sure. to Trent. Um, Alison Beckett's only on 150 grand a week. Whoa. Yeah. I didn't know that. He's on 150 grand a week, Alison Becker. Do you remember, do you remember Marnay's wages? Ryan Gravenberg is on 150 grand a week. Ryan Gravenberg is on 150 grand a week as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Trent will want a big big pay pay rise. Yeah, Ryan Gravberch, who just got bought, who's a very who's only like 20 years of age, is only on 30 grand less than Trent, who's uh Liverpool through and through. And won everything. Yeah, That's and nice. this is what I keep saying. I mean uh, and McAllister's on 150 as well. So the two new midfielders that joined this summer are both on 150 grand a week. Yeah. It's done on less. So, McAllister's on less of a salary than Gravenberch. No, they're both on 150. Same. Same. Yeah, same. same. I'm going to be yeah. real. I don't know how Grav's Sabozlai. pulled out. From Grav's Sabozlai. agent Sabozlai. is a genius. So, Bozlai's on 120. That's nuts. You know, Grav's I, agent I, you is know, a genius. Do you know how much Curtis Jones is on? Uh, well, Joel Matip's on 100 grand a week. Curtis Jones is on about 50, by the way. Joe Gomez is on eight. 
Yeah. Go, 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 is on 85 grand a week. Curtis Jones is on about 50, I think. Kurt, how much do you reckon Canati's on? How much do you reckon Canati's on? I'm going to go 120 for you, boo. He's on 80. 70. 70 grand a week. Do you know what? This may not be a sum where we buy players. This might be a sum where we actually start playing, paying the ones we've got. Luis Diaz is on fifty-six thousand pound a week. Yeah, I knew, I knew he was on. I knew he was on a, a low wage. That's just mad. It's crazy, isn't it? Um, it's cra- It's crazy that we signed Graven Birch. I'm sorry, like, but I did talk about this a while ago. It's crazy that we take a player with wages that much. Like, it's nuts. I did not know Grav's on. How has that, that not dished, How has that not caused any stink in the change? You know room? why Grav's like, on seriously? that much? <laughs> it's because it uh, thing with Graven Birch. I think one of its potential, and the second of it is he he is quite a name for a young guy in football already that can ask for that much money. And he came from Bayern Munich. I don't. He must have been on hundred grand a week at Bayern Munich to be on the wages. He, I think he was on one fifty. I think he was on big wages at Bayern. Like, yeah, if he was on big was wages at Bayern Munich, the boy got no choice. Yeah. They'll go buy him and have to give him the wages. What, what's, so, Kurt, what's, um, what's Curtis Jones on? Curtis Jones is on 15 grand a week. One wow. five. Wow. Yeah, man. One five. Wow. He makes 780 pound a year. That's uh, 780,000 pound a year. He needs a pay rise. He needs a pay rise. Jeez. One five. 15. Yeah. Wow! Do you know, there's only two. There's only two first team players that are on less. One of them's you know Keller. Him? Yeah, he's on the less. He's on the. And one of them's Elliot. No, 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 no. Elliot's on. Uh, Harvey Elliot is on forty grand a week. How is Curtis Jones? Curtis Jones is new. When's his contract expire? Has he just Curtis signed Jones one? Came. Harvey Elliot got bought, so he's going off. He's always going to be on more wages. Fifteen grand that. is just. For someone so who's a two less, Quaven Kelleher, Quaven Kelleher, and Connor Bradley are both on ten grand a week. We may have That's to really look. At, we may actually really have to look at the prices we're paying on contract and really address that, or else we are going to become a club that no one wants to come to. Thing is, though, these players do come and accept these contracts. No, so I don't know. There's. I don't know. I don't know what they're putting. I don't know what the sugar is they're putting in the tea at the uh, um, AXA, but yeah, it's a controlling factor. <laughs> Jones got a new contract yeah. last year. No way. Yeah, he did. That's why I thought he was on way more than that. How did he sell? Who's his agent? He needs sacking. <laughs> That's nuts. Because he's a youth player, isn't that. Because he came that. from the youth system. All the youth systems are on a. Uh, on lower money, you're always on lower money. Come through the Luke youth system. Is that one of the first first players on the, in the midfield now? I mean, when Curtis comes to sign his new deal, he's probably going to be on hundred grand a week. So, oh, you should, I mean, we should hope. But so. incentives as well. I mean, the bonuses on top probably takes it quite high. No, the bonuses wow. are going to take it quite high. So when we look at this, when we look, we go right at the top active. This is an active roster as well for this season. You know, it's the active roster for this season. If I, I can go back in time if you want to find out others. Um, I think uh, Matip's always been on 100 grand, like, since we yeah. signed him. I think his has always been, like, just renewed. So, um, Mo Salah, before he signed his new deal, was back on 200 grand a week before he signed his yeah, new deal. Yeah, it was, yeah. He went out quite a lot. Um, we broke our wage structure for him, didn't we? Completely. I think yeah, two hundred yeah, grand yeah. was our limit, wasn't it? And that was like Stevie Gerrard, wasn't it? Divock Origi was on sixty grand a week. All that time he was at Liverpool. Do you know who was on more money than Origi at Liverpool, and he only played one season? Nat Phillips. No. Well, yeah, he was, but. Adrian. Uh, Minamino. Minamino. Minamino was on 75 grand a week. Bloody hell. I think Adrian's on 60. Adrian is on 58 grand, it says here. It's on 58 grand to be a, to be a DJ. <laughs> Not a bad life, is it? <laughs> no one, did, no one he doesn't want to leave. But yeah, so uh, absolute. Uh, look, the deal was... 
So Salah is, or it, what is he, 31 Salah? Or Gabby, 30, is he 31? Can't remember 31, how old I think so, yeah. 31. So Salah's on Virgil's 352. 32, by the way. Virgil's 32. He's just 10, 32. Like, so we've got so, a bit of time. Salah is on 350 grand a week. Ser- on serious note, what do you see he can go to? Because I can't see him just staying. I don't see him going Saudi yet. I don't think he'll leave Liverpool personally. I think Mo will sign a new deal. But do you think he will sign a new deal on the wages he's on? Or is there going to be a, an up? Is he wanting 400 grand a week? An extra 50 grand? I reckon an extra bump. 375? I think they sell about 380. 380 for Mo. How many years are you giving him if you was Michael Edwards right now, guys? How many years are you give him Mo? Three. Three, yeah. Three on top of the one that he's got left. Yeah. So yeah. four years in total. No, no, I do I do two with a with a one year extension option. What about uh and, and I I don't I don't think Mo will go to Saudi Arabia. I think I think I think if Mo ever leaves us, he'll go to PSG. Yeah, I don't think um, he goes to Saudi Arabia. I just don't. I just don't think Mo's interested in that. No, there's, right. there's never been anything from his end, like never. Even his agent, like, literally shut it all down straight away. I'm, st- I'm still, I'm still shell shocked over those wages. All right, who's yeah. the highest paid? <laughs> who's the highest paid player player in the league? Um, De, Bruyne. De Bruyne. De Bruyne. Five. Is it five? Five. Twenty. Let me have a look. Like Hang on. I'll have a Google. He's a, he's on five hundred uh, plus, I think De Bruyne. It's not Haaland. Um, he is on oh, Kevin De Bruyne signed a five-year contract at one hundred and four million, um, a year. All right, I'm gonna say something wild here. De Bruyne, in my opinion, is obviously phenomenal, right? I would all agree that Salah's in that category with Haaland, right? With um, oh, De Bruyne. So, uh, De Bruyne is, oh, yeah. De Bruyne is on 400 grand a year. 400 grand a week. 400, 400 grand a week. So he's in the same category as De Bruyne. And he's not as injury... He's not as prone as De Bruyne is. No. He's our top goal scorer, pretty much. And probably we are top assist maker. And he hasn't yeah. showed signs of a decline. True. I mean, if De Bruyne is on that, then Matthew. Salah should. There's an argument to say Salah should be on more than De Bruyne. There's not. There's an argument to say Salah should be the highest paid player in the league. Yeah, easily. So I don't disagree with that. I mean, Kevin De Bruyne, same age as well. You know, same age as Salah. Kevin's older. Yeah, I think, yeah I think he's 32. I think he's 32 yeah. to Bruyne now. Just a little bit older. Um, yeah. Haaland take, is on 375 grand a week. Yeah, let me go through look, Let me go through City's wages for a minute for a laugh, yeah? So, Oscar Bob, how much do you think he earns a week? He's More a league Curtis player, Jones. member of their squad. 25. More than Curtis Jones. <laughs> Oscar Bob is on eight grand a week. Oh, no. <laughs> But he's just come through the academy. Yeah. yeah. Rico Lewis. I'm going to go seven. Um, 25 grand. Scott Carson. 20. 30. Yeah. Right, what? let me go. How yeah, are these yeah, old yeah. goalkeepers getting paid mega bucks? Right. <laughs> do, you know how many, do you know how many players? Most of their squad are part right. So most of their squad are on 100 grand a week plus. Yeah. Um Edison is on a hundred grand. That's all Edison's on, by the way. Oh wow. Wow. Um Julian Alvarez a hundred grand. Matthias Nunes a hundred and thirty grand. Kovacic hundred and fifty grand. Nathan Ake a hundred and sixty. Carl Walker one hundred seventy five. Ruben Diaz one eighty. Uh, uh um Akanji is on a hundred and eighty grand a week, which I think is a bit steep. And then you go, and then you go to the serious people. They got, hang on, they got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They got eight players in their active squad that are all on over two hundred thousand pound a week. You want to name? 
Who's the eight? Edison's not there, you know. Really surprised. I gave, I gave you De Bruyne and Haaland. Who do you reckon the other five are? Bernardo. Bernardo. Uh, Bernardo Stones. Silva is on 300 grand a week. Stones. Stones is on 250 grand a Rodri. week. Uh, Rodri. Rodri is on 220 grand a week. Rodri's uh, on 220 Foden. grand. Foden. Yeah. Foden is on 225. There's two more. Wow. He's on more than Rodri. Grealish. Grealish is the other one. Grealish is on 300 grand a week. Yeah. And one more. Bought this summer. Defender. Oh, Guardiola. Two hundred grand. Yeah, three hundred. Two hundred. Two hundred. Oh, how did he? So City have got City have got a player on four hundred, and they got three players on three over three hundred grand a week. Jack Grealish, three hundred grand a week. That's why I say when people talk about Liverpool's wage bill, mental. I believe Liverpool's wage bill is accounting for every single Liverpool staff member, player, and non-playing staff. Hence yeah, yeah. why our, our, our actual wage bill of just players, is, in my opinion, is quite a substantial bit lower than the others. Yeah. But I think they put everyone's wages in there to make it look as though we are on the level playing field as the others. It's mad, isn't it? That's mad. Yeah, like, Man, City are pay- Man City are paying all their staff through another company mate don't worry about that yeah. allegedly i don't think <laughs> i personally don't think guys any team in the premier league can compete with city's wage bill for them players chelsea no maybe. Player, no team in the premier league is giving jack Reed 300 grand a week chelsea so chelsea or man united might be might have some stupid few players enough. <laughs> stupid enough i mean it's just matter you make me think there Sorry, this is just fun to look at. I mean, we are taking, we're taking 300 grand off our wage bill as well a week because we're losing Thiago and Matip who were on 200 grand and 100 grand. Adrian as well. Oh, yeah. So that's like 360 grand there. Jesus Christ. That's like, (laughs) that's like, um, that's like Jack Grealish. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, Man United players eat, I tell you. I told you, Dave. They are on. Isn't, isn't, like Martial, isn't Martial on like 250 grand and he doesn't even play? Like, well, Casemiro, who's old, play, is on 350 grand a week. Oh, they signed the him on a four year contract as well. Rafael Varane, who's an extremely average centre back, is on 340 grand a week. Yeah. Marcus Rashford is on 300 grand a week. Martial is on 250 grand a week. Mason Mount is on 250 grand a week. Bruno Fernandes is on 240 grand a week. Anthony is on 200 grand a week. Harry Maguire, 189. Christian Eriksen, 150. Luke Shaw, 150. Lindelof, 120. It's just mad. I I think I think Man United's wage bill is probably more than Man City's. If you if you if you look at that. Yeah, then there's a lot of players on like like Ramos Hoyland is on eighty five grand a week. Dalio uh and Medalio is on one hundred twenty eight grand a week. Amrabat is on sixty five grand a week. Bloody hell! So this is the active roster. I can't get San, uh, Sancho up because he's not on the active roster. He's on over two hundred and fifty. Darwin yeah. Nunes, by the way, is on one hundred and forty grand a week. Yeah. So like, hang on. Before I carry on, I just want to see with Chelsea, and then we'll move on. Sorry, I'm just interested. Chelsea. I'll just take Oli on Anana. He's got to be on like 200 grand. Yeah, he was on 180. So who's the highest? Who do you think the highest play active player at Chelsea is right now? Um, absolutely nuts. Is it Rhys James? Mm. Sterling. Yeah. Sterling's on three hundred twenty-five thousand pound a week. Yeah, Sterling was on a big wage. Sterling should have definitely stayed at City. I still don't understand that move. Unless Pep told him you need to leave or you, you, we're selling you, he should have stayed. Their 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 wage bill ain't mad, you know. So Sterling's on three twenty-five. Probably, probably London, you know, Carl. Probably London. So is is the thing yeah, we can go to with Trent right here a comparison for Trent? 
Reese James is on 250 grand a week. Now, it's not a comparison, though, Jess. Is that something Trent would look at? To, uh, no. Personally, I think he should be paid 250 grand a week, and it's not a problem to me. But do you reckon that's what Trent's looking at? No, because if you're going to compare him to Reese James, he plays triple the amount of games Reese James played. He yeah. also um, has contributed to significant amount of trophies and silverware. It, there's like, it, in theory, if he goes on the trajectory he's on, he's going to move into midfield and contribute again even more. Reese is overpaid for what you get for him. Trent is underpaid for what we get from him. Yeah. Second yeah, all of that. We, we're gonna we're gonna have we're gonna have to break our wage structure. We're gonna have to. It, the only we way are. we don't break our wage structure is if you sell these players and you have a refresh. But then it means we're constantly rebuilding. Yeah. But then if you do have a refresh, you're gonna get guys that look at <laughs> that look at Gravenberch and go, Hang yeah. on a minute. You're paying a twenty paying a twenty one year old hundred and fifty grand there. You know that's what we want. That's twenty one year old. I'm, look, I'm just looking at Arsenal's wage bill. It ain't that bad. It ain't mad. No, Ar- Arsenal are really good with their wage bill. Like, uh, they they top, uh, their wage bill for um Kai for Havertz. that striker that they 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 basically bid. Um, well, Kai Havertz is their highest earner. He's on two hundred and eighty yeah. grand a week. Yeah. Then it's Gabriel, so it's two sixty five. Declan Rice two forty. Hoyland two forty, and Part A two hundred. And then after that, Saka's on one hundred and ninety five. William Saliba one hundred and ninety. Gabriel 180, Sinchenko 150, Aaron Ramsdale 120, Ben White 120. Yeah, they pretty much, you know, Smith Rowe 40, Fabio Vieira 45, El Nini and Tommy Asu 55, Dave, uh, David Raya 85, uh, Timber 90, Gabriel 100 grand a week. Uh, pretty much Liverpool and Arsenal, not much difference at all, to be absolutely fair. Yeah. Not much difference at all. But look, the three guys, are we worried, honestly, or do you think they're just going to sign new deals, guys? Any wor- any any itch at the back of your mind thinks, shit, it's, it's getting too much of a worry now? Or do you think Edwards and Hughes go in there in the summer and just get them sorted? What's your, what's your gut feeling? I think that's the priority. I think they get them sorted. They get them sorted. Yeah, Same you came I, I think I think they get them sorted. I I also think that they might they might start looking at um looking at moving on a few players as well that we've still got. Um, but that's for another show probably. Mm. Right, Let's... and you know who they are. <laughs> yeah, one of them's Defo Robbo. Let's let's do a bit where people are not going like this, right? Jurgen Norbert Klopp. Is he overrated? No. And the reason, <laughs> the reason I say this, and I'll go have a proper discussion on it. I want a proper discussion on it because I see I, 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 this has been a topic of for some reason the last couple of days because in national break people will make topics up. But I wanted to talk about this because I've seen people talking about that, and not Liverpool fans, like just generic channels talking about Jurgen Klopp, he's, what he's done for you know all this in his career. And because a lot of people are Liverpool haters, uh, it's quick to put him down. So I thought, oh, we're a Liverpool channel, let's chat about it and let's talk about it properly. So is he overrated or is Jurgen Klopp underrated, Cal? All right. So depending on who you're speaking to, what well, well, do you know? Let me just clear up Danny Mills because I don't know what the hell he's talking about with all due respect. And it's all came from Danny Mills and everyone followed yeah, him. Right. Yeah. He's not overrated. And if so, who's he overrated by? Because he's pretty much won everything you can win. Now, what I will say, I do think he's slightly underachieved. I will say that. I do think we could have won more trophies. And he's not the only contributing factor to that, but he does have to take some of the criticism there as well. But say he's underrated, you look at what he took over at Liverpool Football Club and where the club is now, not just on the pitch, but off the pitch as well. He's massively contributed to that. I could maybe name three or four players that we've signed on permanent contracts that he's not improved as a player 
when they've walked through the door. I can name very well. I've I've got two hands and I've got ten toes. I could probably fill all of those with players who have left the club since he's been here and not gone on to do anything with their careers or do anything better with their careers. That's not a coincidence for me. That's and we talk about younger players, older players as well. We're talking about a man who has or had one of the least desirable midfields and cakewalk the Premier League after winning the Champions League, after coming back against one of the toughest oppositions in one of the toughest circumstances. And he's done it on a budget whereby we're not being pulled up and accused of cheating by anyone. The most we did, which again, still cheating, is we we did we copy some of Man City's database or something like that for scouting, which again is wrong. But when you look at the fact that the team that we've taken the data from are facing 115 charges, probably going to be more in the future. And that's the team we're going up against. I mean, to say we've under... To say he's overrated, I, I mean, again, it just reeks of talk sport looking for a topic to try and rattle fans. And again, I keep on saying this to Liverpool fans. I know we've got to talk about Jay because obviously we're, we're creators and K-Mac yourself as well. But fans, please, Liverpool supporters, don't get rattled by what these people say because they're no. saying it because they want a reaction. They're going to get a reaction from us and the clicks and impressions pay the bills for them. Like We all know that Klopp isn't overrated. Has he Has he achieved everything he should have? Maybe not. But there's, there's, there's circumstance and context around that. But to say a man who's won the Premier League, won the Champions League, been to a further two Champions League finals, won the Carabao Cup twice, won the FA Cup, World Club Cup, European Super Cup. He's overrated. That guy's overrated. If, if he's overrated, I want to see what Danny Mills thinks is a, is a good yeah. manager. And this is this is why I wanted to bring it up, because we're, we're a channel that has proper debates here, and, like, we... I'm not doing this for clicks or anything like that. I, I just, you know, I know everyone's talking about it right now. You know, because mm. what Danny Mills said on Talk Sport, and then a lot of YouTubers and a lot of generic channels that talk about football have taken it and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make it a conversation piece and getting arguments going back and forward to get clicks and debate. And big up to everyone making content, you've got to pay the bills, and I get it. But from a Liverpool fan point of view, we're going to talk about why it's bullshit. <laughs> you know, that's what, that's what we're going to talk about. What year did he take over? Was it the 15 16 season? Yeah. So do you want me to read out his squad in the 15-16 season? And why he's not that's hilarious. I feel like it's right, let me read out his squad. So this is what he had to deal with. Ming is, is this starting start in Levin? Ricky Lambert. Lambert. And he got Ricky Lambert. I'm just going to read. Still. I'm going to read that, guys. I'm going to read out his oh. whole squad. I'll like, go through. Whole, go through. Right. It's this whole squad that he had to deal with when he came to Liverpool. Ming Bogdan. 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 Mm. Danny Ward. Nathaniel Klein. Enrique. Torre. Lovren. Stephen Colker. Alberto Moreno, Sacco, Joey G, who's still the only one there. Um, Thiago Ilori, Kevin Stewart, Martin Skirtle, John Flanagan, Joseph Maguire, Connor Randall, Lloyd Jones, Brad Smith, who's actually at Bournemouth, sir. Daniel Cleary, Connor Matteson, Andre Wisdom, Brent Alexander-Arnold, Jordan Henderson, Philippe Coutinho, James Milner, Luis Alberto. You remember Luis Alberto, man? Good yeah. player. I wish he, I wish he made it. Now. Yeah, he should. Sure Adam Lalana, Lucas Leva, Emre Chan, Joe, Javi Allen, um, <laughs> Cameron Brannigan, Jordan Ibe, Ryan Kent, Jordan Rossiter, Sergi, uh, Sergi Canos, Sir yeah. uh, Xavier <laughs> Ojo, Joe Texeria, Lazar Markovic, Pedro Chiavella. Do you remember Alan? We've never played. Yeah, Alan Rodriguez. Because he, he couldn't get a work permit. Yeah. Marco Gorich was obviously Klopp's first signing. Harry yeah. Wilson, Divo Carigi, Daniel Sturridge, Bobby Firmino, Christian Benteke, Danny Ings, Jermaine Sinclair, Fabio Barini, and, Mat and Balotelli. God, he got left some garbage. So, yeah, he's overrated, guys. He just... If he's overrated, I want to know what Danny Mills thinks is a good manager. He's, can I? Um, he's, can, he's can coming I, can I just, at, oh, Yeah, on, go on, go on, go for it. Kevin. So, um, so 
all I can say about talk sport is um, I remember when Stan Collymore and a couple of the other um, Liverpool, ex-Liverpool players left. And they left because they were sponsored by The Sun. Yeah, so, yeah. so I fucked them off. Because they're part yeah. of well, they're owned by they're owned by yeah. Rupert Murdoch, aren't they? Exactly. So I've been talk sport a long, long time ago. I um, actually, like, because yeah. of because of that. The only reason I, I I started listening to it again is because um Graeme Souness was on there, and I think Graeme Souness is quite possibly the best the best pundit commentator there is. I just think he's brilliant. Um, I can listen to him all, all day. Um, I swear Danny Mills is is paid by the Tories. Like he just constantly has to go at Liverpool and Merseyside. He just does. Um, yeah. I, I would I, like, like, man. like I will touch on the Klopp thing though, because like, I mean, Cal's like covered it in great detail there. And it was really good analysis. Is he took over Mainz and got them promoted? Yeah? yeah, took over Dortmund, won the league, got to the Champions League, won a Polko Cup, took over oh. Liverpool. And these are all clubs that were in lower lower positions, a lot lower than where he took them and won everything with us. Like, wherever he's gone, he's done wonders with it on shoestring budgets because he's done that with Liverpool as well. And if you look at just what we've, what we've spent, I think we're like ninth in clubs of what we've spent with Klopp. So he's been, he's been incredible in that sense. The only thing he's underachieved with is he hasn't won enough finals, but he's took us to so many finals, and he's took all these other clubs to so many finals. Yeah, and that's all you want in a manager, is to get to there, to get to the stage where you can win it. That's yeah. what you want as a fan, and he's delivered that in spades for me. That's it. Damn right, man. Damn right. I like. I mean, you just got to look at his career. You got to look at the Dortmund. What he did at Dortmund, he picked. Dort- Everyone forgets Dortmund were so much trouble. Yeah, weren't they sixteenth <laughs> or fifteenth in their league? Really in trouble. If you know they're worried about him going down, and he even out of business at one time. Yeah, and then Klopp came in with the people in charge around there, giving a little bit of time to get his way into it because that's how Klopp likes to do it. And then eventually, when he got into stride, they went back to back leagues he won a pokal got to a champions league final yeah. and what's happened to Dortmund since it, 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 it's, okay, it's, it's absolutely mad this let me just right i've gone two years later two years later in a liverpool squad and this is why what he's done is amazing work because he's not got a, a man city owner that can come in and just do what you want to start with and build the squad really quickly and really effectively and go and win Premier League. Because it's not a way it's built at Liverpool. So he's had to build it slowly. So this is actually two years on from when Klopp joined. He's got Karius in goal. Mingale and Ward are still there. See, even Bogdan. Klein, Sacco, Lovren, Gomez, Flanagan, Matip, Moreno, uh, Clavin, uh, Trent and Robbo. Van Dijk's there now. Midfield, Milner, Wijnaldum, Coutinho, Henderson, Chan still there, Lever still there, Lever, Gruich, who went on loan, Kevin Stewart, who left because Robbo came in, um, uh, and Harry Wilson, uh, Oxide Chamberlain, and Curtis Jones got promoted to the senior team, mm. and Curtis jo- uh, and Oxide Chamberlain came in that season. The forwards: Mo Salah, Salanke, Mane, Ben Woodburn, Danny Ings, Origi, Sturridge, and Bobby Firmino. And Rian Brewster coming through a youth. And that's two years later. So you're seeing the progress over two years. It takes time. And it's absolutely mad. I'm going to look at the Arsenal one in a minute. Because, yeah, he said, basically making the Arteta as a far better coach than Klopp. Which just... Who's, who just said right. that? That's Danny what Danny Mills Mills said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, he, 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 he firstly, I think he said something the fact that he thinks Pep's the only better coach than Arteta in the league. Oh, he's tapped. He tapped. Yeah, I've seen it elsewhere as well. You know, Arteta's lucky to be in a job. Like seriously, well, if, Arte, if Arsenal don't he's win anything this season, a job. he could have been sacked. Like, he's lucky he was backed. Like, seriously, well, if Arsenal don't win anything money this... and didn't didn't even get into Europe, <laughs> if they don't win anything this season. They're in trouble, man. 
I mean, I don't know what else. The the thing about Arsenal as well, and and I've spoken about this before, is they have to go on a 19-game winning streak to win the league. It's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. Like, they won 10 games. They're not going to win another nine. Like, they've never done it in their history. Like, uh, there's not many clubs that have ever done a 19 winning game streak. Like, so it's just not going to happen. Like, so just write them off. It, it, it's just, yeah, it's, it, it's, a, it, it's whole clock thing now. Let's list him against some obviously elite managers. Is Klopp better than Mourinho? Now, no, I personally wouldn't say so because you've got a good look at Mourinho, what he's done in his managerial career. You know, he won the UEFA Cup with Porto and then the following year won the European Cup. I mean, that that's an amazing achievement. Then went to Chelsea and in his first season. Mourinho's first season was record breaking at the time, yeah, I believe, wasn't it? 90 points, 14 goals, goals, goals conceded, and didn't they bring the they broke the goal scoring record at the same time? Yeah, 95 was yeah. it 95 points as well. Lost one game in the season, I think it yeah. was. It is it's an amazing achievement. And then obviously, and then he, you know, when he left Chelsea, he came back and won another league with them. Like yeah. It's an amazing sh- what he's done. Inter Milan winning the European Cup, winning Champions League with Inter Milan. Yeah, Mourinho CV's Play, going. Playing Eto as a left back or a right back yeah. in that game. <laughs> and he's a lead. There's no doubt about it. Look, today's version of Mourinho, for me, can't touch today's version of Jurgen Klopp. No, of course. But if you go back to Manchin, what he's done, even in the Premier League, you might put Mourinho above Jurgen Klopp as Premier League managers. Yeah, don't yeah. problem with me saying that. Then you've got Ancelotti, who won the double in his first season at Chelsea, and then for some reason got sacked. Don't know why. I, I think he broke the, the goal scoring record as well. Yeah, it done a great job, man. It done great. Conte, first season at Chelsea, wins the Premier League. Um Deep Mateo won Arthur, the European Cup and got sacked. <laughs> Arsene Wenger. Let's go with Arsene Wenger, because this is the one. Arsenal Wenger's obviously won three Premier Leagues and seven FA Cups at Arsenal in the 23 years he's in charge at Arsenal. Yeah. Jürgen's obviously been here for eight years. He's won everything once apart from the League Cup. He's won that twice. Yeah. But he's won the Champions League. And he could win the Europa League this season. If he if Klopp wins the Europa League and Premier League this season, does that put him above? Arsene Wenger as Premier League yeah. great managers. Yeah, because yeah. also you've got to look at his body of work in Germany as well. So, yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. I think it I think it puts him ahead as well because I, I know we're talking about trophies, but he got us to two European Cup finals as well. Like, he got us, he's got us to so many other finals. Yeah, we've, three, we've like, played three, to look at that. three, bro. We've, three came we've played four European, European finals. We played four European finals. Sorry, yeah, before. sorry, four, sorry, three. Three Champions League finals. Oh yes, and the Europa League four in total, yeah. Yeah. And so he's played four. You know, he's only won one of them, and that's what a lot of people that are against the neg- ne- uh, narrative that Klopp's any good, they will just point to the fact, well, you got the finals, but you only won one of them. It's extremely hard to win a final. There's only one and of then, them in four as well. Yeah, and then obviously everyone will come back at you and go, well, you won the final against Tottenham. You know, like that matters who you play. You know, I mean, it's a final. Um. So that's what people will say against him. Look, Pep Guardiola and Jürgen... Look, I'm not bothered by saying Pep Guardiola is a better manager than Jürgen Klopp. That don't bother me saying it. I'm not bothered by it. A lot of people are. I can't dismiss, no matter what people might think of Manchester City, I literally can't dismiss Pep Guardiola's work as a manager in his career. It's at such a high level. It's such a high level. Even having the pl- people that say, well, he's had the best players. But you'll keep them players happy, man. And he's improved everyone. Yeah. As a coach, I, as a coach and tactically, I agree, Jay. I just, he's been part of these, these teams with scandals, though. Barcelona oh, yeah, being yeah, investigated yeah. for All match fixing. Uh, like... All of them. But Bayern Munich were a mess when he left. What he left Hansi Flick with was an absolute shit, shit show. 
Like, I, I need to see what comes with these these he does. Um, these these charges because if City get charged, that for me undoes a lot of Pep's work. Yeah. Well, Pep, Dean Pep gets suspended from football himself as a player. Yeah, and Angelo. Yeah. For for taking a steroid, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So that was a year or so. So things have followed him around, but till he's found guilty, because we have to say this, till anything's found guilty, looking at it on paper, you know, he, that Barcelona side might be the greatest club team I've watched from my own eyes. You know, that was just the Bayern Munich team. He never won the European Cup with Bayern Munich. Yes, yeah. he won everything with Bayern Munich, but who doesn't? You know, everyone wins it. Thomas Tuchel won the Premier, the, the German League with Bayern Munich. You know, average managers can win a league with Bayern Munich. Yeah, but he never won the European Cup, and obviously he won the European Cup eventually with Man City because it was always go happen. Yeah, it's hard to compare the Liverpool City stuff, and also look with the Liverpool City stuff. When people like Pete Danny Mills goes on about he's only won one Premier League, if I told Danny Mills tomorrow that your team got ninety-seven points but you didn't win the Premier League, how would you react? <laughs> Like seriously, how would you relax react if I you woke up from a coma and you went, Oh, my team get on, that's my team get on? And I go, Well, listen to this, you finished on 97 points. He's like, he's popping the champagne and thinking he's won a Premier League trophy. Yeah. And then I go, No, you finished second. And he'd be like, How's that possible? And then the season and, went, like okay. and he goes into another coma because <laughs> it's what should happen. He goes into another yeah. coma and he wakes up again, and he goes, and he goes, Oh, how did we do? How did we do? What tell me it was like we won it this time? He's like, right, this time you finished on 92 points. 92 points, 97. Yeah. Surely it's a Premier League. No, again, sorry. We finished second again, 92 points. How's this possible? Is it Great. just bad luck? How can you go to a club and a manager and go finishing on 92, 97 points and not being that, not being successful? Like, what other manager, guys, has got them many points and not won a Premier League? None. No. And would you blame? Is any blame attached to anybody for finishing on 97 points? The night like, uh, the last I mean, game as well. Both, if you're both. being really pedantic, you could turn around and say we drew some games in there that we shouldn't yeah. have. Yeah. Same, with, same with the, the quad chasing season. But, but then you could also again, go back to the 97 point season and go, they gave offside to Mane against Arsenal when he was two yards onside. No, that was the season before. Was that the season four? Or was it the yeah. City game with the ball over the line? It's like, yeah, yeah. Loads I, I've, loads you, know, you know what? I, I've, I've run that back in my head so many times. Like, oh, you know, we drew against these teams. But you know what? It makes no difference. Like, just to amount that many points is just insane and still not win anything. It just is. Like, didn't they do like a, didn't they, didn't they look at that? And there was only like, there was only like two teams in, in Premier League history that, that hadn't amassed that and won a league. Like, it's nuts. No, none. Us. None. It's 97 yeah. had only, the, that total had only been beaten by City twice. And that's when they did the Centurions in the season where they finished on 98. No. And then we did 99 points. So we, we've got the second highest points total in the Premier League era. We've had three, guys, we've three Premier League seasons in the last five. You've three Premier League well. seasons in that last five in that time. We finish on ninety plus points in three seasons, but only won one title. Do you know how mad that is? Ask to put it in context. Arsenal, when they went invincible, I think finished on ninety points exactly. Yeah. So we've had three seasons where we would have got more points than the Invincibles. And you, no, no wonder Klopp's leaving. <laughs> yeah. I think the um, Rodri ball, yeah, against Everton. You know, I think that Mourinho season, um, where they broke a hunt, was there a hundred points? Night. Day? Mm. No, that was in um, Spain. Oh, was it? Okay. A lot of people in the chat are talking about comparing Klopp and Simeone. I don't. I mean, I mean, I suppose you can. I suppose you can say that because, like, he broke up the. He, he won a title in between, you know, the the normal people that win the titles, which is like Man City, Chelsea, Arsenal, Man United. I suppose, like, you can say it like that, but. But he hasn't really gone toe to toe every single year, has he, Simeone? It's an they won one, it once. Man. They won it once, and that was probably because of Suarez. Let's be fair. And they we nearly won it. We nearly they won, won it. Didn't they win it in the COVID year as well? Did they? 
Oh, yeah, I think that. Suarez I think so. did, yeah. I think so. Well, um, we nearly won it because of Suarez as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a Suarez. Swan- it? Back there. <laughs> It, How many points did he get in that season? 13, 14. 89, was it? 89? Oh, yeah, got 80, 84. Still a lot. I mean, that's still... still a lot. That's pretty low, though. City won on 86. What, um, what year was that? 13, 14. 13, 14. Jesus. I can't remember that long ago now. Then 98, 97. Do you know I'm sick about that though? Uh, do you know I'm sick about that? If you go to match week 38. Hang on. Right. So if you go to uh, after 36 games in the Premier League, guys, I'll go back to 2013, 2014 season in a minute. This is why I hate Brendan Rodgers so much. Oh, Liverpool. Liverpool were three, got two games to go. Yeah, Liverpool are on thirty uh, are on eighty points. Yeah, uh, Chelsea have played thirty six and seventy eight points, and Man City have a game in hand, but they're on seventy seven points. Yeah, all Liverpool have to do is keep winning. All they have to do. I think we could have got a draw in. We could have got a draw against Chelsea. Yeah, we only had a draw against Chelsea. Do you know the thing about? Do you know why Mourinho celebrated so much in that Chelsea game? Because he knew he stopped us. No, he asked Liverpool to change the day of the fixture because of Europe, didn't he? And Chelsea and Liverpool said no. He politely said, we can't win the league, but we just want a bit of breathing room for a European game, I believe. And uh, Liverpool said no. That's why he got so pissed and angry about it. And he actually and he, played such an understrength team that day as well. Yeah, yeah. and he went, stuff it. I'll just go uh, stop you winning everything then. Yeah, man, it's... Uh, that wasn't our second to last game. That was our third to last game, though. Yeah, third yeah. to last game. And then the Crystal Palace game, you drew three all after. Yeah. And that's just when you're three nil up. He wanted to try and get the goal difference, didn't he? Which was yeah. He didn't need it though. He, he, he just did, naive. He's just naive from start to finish, Brendan. Man, yeah. it, 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 it's just naivety, and you let people like Gerard and Suarez down. Then the season after, he thought he was the man, and try to get rid of Steven Gerrard. He's while yeah. he was there, didn't he? It's just absolutely Brendan starts back a few years, man. Well, that's what Rogers that's what Klopp came into. Look at the squad we read out. Yeah, and but not just joined. that. I think match. everyone everyone remember everyone forgets Brendan's first full season at Liverpool. Like we finished seventh in that season. He was seventh, yeah. second, seventh. No, sixth or seventh. And then when he left us, we were mid table. Like yeah, his debut year, we almost won the league. No, but, that was his second season. Was it his second Came season? the season before that, yeah, because he gave debut to yeah, that's right, yeah. Mm-hmm. So in our second season, because we weren't in Europe, was we? Remember, he signed Barini, you know. He signed Barini. He signed Barini, and oh, Christ! One of the worst yeah. strikers to. He didn't care though, did he? He just want. He just wants the players. He didn't care. He just wants. He just. He was just. An, he was just an arrogant manager who thought yeah, his. He just thought it was a, a, amazing. At everything. Oh, uh, it, 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 he's just, yeah, he's just an arsehole. Just... Oh, God, I hate that man so much. I hate that man that's so just, much. That's, that's just so the truth here, man. It's he's pure like... ego as well. Like, do you remember, um, do you remember, do you remember that TV show that we did? Oh, and he, yeah. And, and they showed his house and he had a massive portrait of himself in his hall. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah, <laughs> like, who's awesome, this guy? <laughs> Oh, it's mad, ain't it? It's mad. But guys, we're gonna leave it there. But before we go, <laughs> I want to show you guys a little something. Didn't um, play for so, City, by the way. Sorry. <laughs> so the merchandise store is open now. Uh let me get this up a bit bigger for you guys. Um yeah, the merch store is open now, guys. At the moment, we've got some Salah stuff um, on the shop. What I do, I'll go full screen so you can all see. You don't need our faces on there. So, yeah, the the, the, the store is open. The link is in the live chat right now. The link is also in my on the YouTube homepage as well. So make sure you go and check the store out. It's a, there's a pinned um, message in the, in the uh, 
live chat. So go to that pinned comment in the live chat. Hit that link. It'll take you over to the store. So far, we've got some salad stuff in there. There'll be things coming onto the store slowly and surely. Lots of little bits keep coming in. But, yeah, man, we got we got bits on there. we got bits on there. Anything you want, we got... Um, let's, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's have a look, let's have a look. So, we've got some hoodies. So, we've got some salad hoodies, T-shirts, you name it. We... Uh, we got it over here, guys. So, yeah, make sure you come to the store. Have a look, guys. We've got accessories as well. we got some... Hey, there's the mug I got. Snapbacks. You fancy a Salah snapback. All this good stuff, man. All this good stuff. It's at the store. So hit that link, guys. Hit the link. Go and get yourself some uh, some merch. Got T-shirts there. So we've got the Salah stuff on sale at the moment. We'll be getting um, uh, Virgil stuff. Um, Jurgen Klopp tops and obviously the Jamie Phillips tops as well. Got baseball vests, got hoodies, t shirts, long sleeve shirts, caps, the lot. So, guys, make sure you hit that link go and uh go and check it out, guys. I'd appreciate it. Um, yeah, gum shields, yeah, endo gum shields, man. Endo gum shields. We'll see, we'll see what we can do, but yeah, go and hit the link, guys. It's there for you. Uh, go and check it out. I would really, really appreciate it. Thank you very Love much, that, Jamie. I'm happy you've done that, man. Ja- Jamie, there's a there's a discount as well if if you do it if you do it soon yes. as well. So yes, yes. Yeah. We've, there's Just two weeks. Got, so yeah. for two weeks you got fifteen percent off, guys. So yeah, that's brilliant. That. For two weeks you got fifteen percent off. So make sure you go and check it out. Hit the link in the pinned comment in the live chat, guys. Also. Um, the link is in my YouTube homepage. You can go and press on there as well. And just have a look about, have a look about, see what you like. See what you like. I appreciate those guys. Yeah. Endo gum shields, man. Endo gum shields. We well, look. Yeah, the week, as the, it's bloody as hard the, uh, to get gum shields sorted. Oh, oh, I got, I got them. Don't worry. Oh, you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm there for them, it. Man. Yeah, I've got uh, more things will be coming onto the um, onto the store as well. So it's going to be clock merchandise, Virgil merchandise, Salad merchandise. Also, um, some Jamie Phillips polo T-shirts as well with a badge on the crest in the corner as well. So, yeah, they'll be coming through in the days to come. So they'll be linking onto the page. So just make sure you keep checking them out, guys. And if there's anything you like or want or request, just let me know. And I can see if they've got them available. So anything you want, you know, just let us know, man. Any curly wigs in there, Frank says. Got, Frank. <laughs> um, um, yeah, make sure, guys, any, go and any... check Frank's channel out. Go and check Frank's channel out. Go and subscribe to Frank's channel. He's a great guy. Massive Liverpool historian Big as well. Frank. You would have seen him recently on Channel 5. So, um, yeah, go and check my man Frank out. Go on, came out with you, say. Are you not doing, um, are you not doing any of your, uh, of your, of your brother... Um, McAllister t-shirts now. Some bros, some bro t-shirts. <laughs> there, there'll be more coming. See, we got these. The, we got the, my wife. Help, my wife helped get the design, so we got the yeah. design. So yeah. we just go. It, it just takes time getting all these designs. But yeah, I want to be a bit unique. Have stuff some people haven't got. You know, and some stuff people ain't got. So that, guys, that's Stefan Bassetich's photo of his calves. That's not real. It's got to be photoshopped. They're, they're way too big. <laughs> they look like Definitely. biceps. No, no. After they, they go in the training video. He, he's Jeez. Real. Bloody hell. Go he's going to the video, be... man. It's real. He's a... I can't um, wait to see I, him, man. I think even someone said that... Um, uh, I think it was Klopp himself who said in an interview that he's got bigger. Like, he's massive. Man. But he's pain free. Manchester... Brilliant. Yeah, the man just... Uh, he's having he a pre-season on... now, isn't he? Apparently. He's doing his pre-season now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he'll be playing some part. He'll be playing some guy part. So, guys, don't forget to go and subscribe to the guys as well. You know where Cow is at Copies and the Sanderson Show. Go. Make sure you're going to smash that up. Uh, and don't forget to go and join K-Max channel as well. Subscribe to my man over there as well. He's always here helping out the channel as well. So, and, guys, link, as I said, is in the live chat on the pinned go and hit it or the link in the youtube homepage on my channel you can find the shop there i appreciate everyone thank you very much for joining us in this early hours till again guys i'll probably be back monday tuesday time for the weekend off now and chill the family but see you in a few days guys appreciate love